Right, so this will be the basic first aid course, just to run you through it, so everyone, like I said earlier, is on the same level throughout the whole company, and then we can go forward as a company from there. So, basic first aid course. Welcome to the basic first aid medical course, it's designed to give you an overview of the ACE medical system at its basic level. It will teach you how to keep the casualty alive until trained medical staff can relieve you and intervene. At any point you've got any questions, just interrupt me, and we'll go and answer them. So basic ACE interaction. Your default interaction key should be left windows. You just check that. Make sure everyone's working. Question. Go on. Mine minimizes my game for some reason. Uh, it's because your windows key is not set. Well, is your keyboard like a special keyboard? Like you can set it to gaming mode. Uh, not that I know of. It's a special needs keyboard. <laughs> you might have an old keyboard that have, might have the left windows enabled, so every time you press it, it goes into your left window start menu. Um, there should be an option somewhere to turn that off, but we'll go over that as a technical issue. Is that all, or is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go over that later. Or I'll send you a PM with it. There's a way to solve it. But anyway, for now, so that's your interaction should be left windows, and your self-interaction should be control left control, left windows, together. Can everyone try that to make sure it works? I'll take the silences, it all works. So, basic ACE interaction. So now look to the person to your left and use your interaction key. You should see each body part come up as an interaction point. These interaction points being head, chest, left arm, etc, etc. While holding the key, if you look towards an interaction point, you should activate the point and it should bring up a radial of options depending on the gear in your inventory. From here you can do the majority of the actions needed. However, some basic actions can only be done on certain parts of the body. This being, the heart rate can only be checked on the head, arms or legs. As non-medical personnel, this will only show up as low, medium or high. This information should be passed on to the CTM as soon as you come in contact with him. Blood pressure can only be checked at the arms or legs. Tourniquets can only be placed on limbs, such as arms and legs. And remember to move, remove them after you've used them, or tell someone it's there, so they don't leave it on, because obviously you're restricting the blood. To drag and carry, uh, you'll notice below the chest there is an interaction menu. That's where you find it. All medication can only be injected into the arms or legs. And CPR, the option to do that is found in the chest menu. You'll also know at the top left of your screen is an information tab that will tell you lots of information. In that tab, you'll see the information that you, no, sorry, in that tab you'll find the information you need to look for is uh, how many wounds they've got, the type of wounds they've got, the size of wounds they've got, if they've lost a lot of blood, and if they're in pain. This will be the main tab you'll be using to see what's wrong and how you can solve it. So, is there any questions on that segment? No? Good. Equipment and treatment. So as a rifleman, or a pilot, or FSG support, you'll be only carrying 5 times packing bandages, 5 times field bandages, and 1 tourniquet. you all got 1? Uh, yeah. 3 spam now. Yeah, okay. neg, empty. Okay, well we can solve that. And 1 stick of morphine. The following will be a brief description of each item and what it does and the effect on the casualty. So the field dressings, obviously it's a bandage, it functions to stop the bleeding, best used on small to medium wounds. We've got the packing bandages, these guys are used to stop the bleeding as well, and they're used on medium to large wounds. You've got the morphine, which is to reduce pain, its effects are it greatly, greatly lowers the heart rate and blurs the screen. You've got the tourniquets, which it functions to restrict blood flow. Its effect is to help prevent the casualty from bleeding out while you work on other vital parts of the body. And you have CPR, which everyone can do. Its obviously function is to manually restart the heart to bring the casualty out of cardiac arrest. This essentially is a small survival kit that should keep multiple casualties stable until medical personnel can intervene. So as first one on the scene and no CTM in sight, this is what you can do to stabilise the casualty. So first thing you want to do is call it in ASAP so the information starts blowing. Uh, secondly, you want to look for any signs of bleeding and stop it. This obviously requires use of bandages. As a side note, 
you should use the when you use the interaction to look at the body, you'll notice that any bleeding parts come up as a red dot. This means they're bleeding or there's an injury there. Uh, you need to be methodical and efficient. The longer you uh, fan you around, effectively, the more blood your patient could lose and die. Once all the holes are plugged, you want to check the vital signs. Heart rate first, and then blood pressure. A good result will mean that the patient is a bit worse for wear, but will live, and he will be in pain. If the CTM is not on position, and or you're in combat, you can administer one stick of morphine. However, I cannot stress this enough, that this is a last resort. That's if the CTM or no medical personnel is on position and cannot help. So to apply the morphine correctly, you'll first need to check if they've had any morphine previously. This can be done in the top left tab. When you look at the body part, it will tell you a time. It will, it will record the last 15 minutes, I believe. And if you check that, you can see what they've had in the last 15 minutes. Providing they've had nothing, you can go. You can proceed to the next step. The second step is you need to check his heart rate. Now being a basic rifleman, you can only see low, medium or high. So if the heart rate is high, you can get, apply one stick of morphine. If it is medium or low, you may not give the patient morphine, as you may put the patient into cardiac arrest. Now this is really important, because we've had a lot of casualties through certain platoons where they've come back and they've overdosed on drugs a lot. Uh, and the fifth one is the worst case scenario is that the patient has no heart rate and has gone into cardiac arrest. For this, we're going to need to start manually, manual CPR. If the CTM is still not on position, you keep going with the CPR and inform the IC that the situation has got worse. And you keep doing the CPR until told to stop or medical personnel have taken over. A couple of keynotes that you need to take away from this today. Is that the first keynote is the main priority, the number one priority is to stop the bleeding and stabilise. The second priority is communication is key. Tell your IC what's going on. Any medication, tourniquets, or important vitals that you've taken, if the CTM does come along or CMT comes along, pass that information on so they so they know. Effectively, a handover. If there's no heart rate or blood pressure, that does not mean he or she's dead. It means possible cardiac arrest. So don't just dismiss them straight away. Check. Morphine does not remove the pain, it simply keeps the pain away. The pain will come back. It roughly lasts around 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, the pain will come back. And if pain does get so severe, it will knock you out. Uh, do not give morphine if the patient's rate... Uh, sorry, do not give for morphine if the patient's heart rate is below medium or low. Because you will put them into cardiac arrest. And uh, last point is to keep going with the CPR until told to stop or medical personnel have taken over. Has everyone understood and has everyone, you know, got the general idea here that I'm trying to put across? Yep. Yep. Your question. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, any questions, go ahead. You said that if there's no heartbeat, uh, the patient might not be dead. Uh, just check first. How do you check first? Well, you need to obviously see if there are... Uh, there's a gaming way and there's a, there's a realistic way. Go on, who was going to sort then? Isn't there a check response option in it? There is a check response, but they're usually uh, KO'd. Right. But no, there's the gamey way, which if you look over there, you'll see that they've all dropped their rifles. Usually that indicates that they're fucked and they're gone. Uh, the the uh, un-gamey way, the uh, medical way, is you want to check the heart rate, check how many wounds they've got, how big they are, and if you can see that they've pretty much got a shitload of large wounds and they're bled out everywhere then yeah it's depending on time and how long Probably ideally yeah. oh, go, on. go on no patient's dead until the CTM or no, sorry CMT declares it so until then you treat them as a tier 1 that's the uh, the realistic way next question Kind of relating to that, at what point, uh, at what point in the game do we give up, like on CPR people? Yeah, at what point is it a waste of time and uh, detracting from like our sections or whatever? Again, it is a difficult one because if they drop, if you can do it from a gamey view, 
from a game view, if they've dropped the rifle, it's ideally you probably want to stop CPR. From a Milsim view, if if um, well, just keep. I think I think is it seven minutes the uh, realistic time, the real time. How long are you meant to do CPR for before you give up? I think it is seven minutes. I'll double check with Scar. I'm pretty sure he told me it was seven minutes. The only thing I know about CPR is Vinnie Jones and that Staying Alive song. Oh, God. <laughs> Wasn't there a rule in Phase 1 that we never call in anything above a, was it a T4 or a T1? There was, there was some rule we weren't allowed to call in on yeah, the radio. Yeah, you're not allowed to call in T4 over there. Right. Because you can't declare them as dead, as that is the uh, CMT. Right. Because technically he's a doctor. Basically, gents, you want to be looking at... You guys never want to stop CPR, as long as it's viable for you to do so. So, for instance, you've taken one casualty, you know that you're in a firefight, but you've got your CTM treating a casualty. You're not really detracted away from that firefight. Then you continue with the treatment. If you're overrun and it comes to the point where you've got to go, right, okay, well, if we don't get barge back on the line instead of treating casualties, they're putting fire down, we're going to get our asses handed to us. Then that's the decision you make. But if it's if you've got nothing bearing on it whatsoever, and you want to make a decision between whether you're going to continue with the CPR or not, continue with it and get him out there and treat him as if he was a tier one casualty all the way. Because as you know, as uh, was Lund just said, and she said, um, you know, you don't call a tier four casualty as 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 far as we can tell within the field. So keep going. There's times in the past where we've continued to go in and manage to get people back after you know 10, 15 minutes. So there's always there's always a chance. I mean, his medical system is quite complicated and takes so many variables into uh, consideration that it's, there's always worth a shot. And if you're going to put that sort of value on life, then yeah, go for it. Okay. After ten and fifteen minutes, would you have brain damage? Although that would explain. No, it's, it's, it actually yeah. says. Um, I've just checked now. When a doctor or some appropriate emergency medical provider, like a paramedic, tells you to stop. When you become exhausted and cannot continue, or when the victim resuscitates. But I'm sure for Ace, I think we said around seven minutes. But we'll go from there. Any other questions? What do we do if it's called in that uh, we're low on numbers and that we're needed back at the front? Do we just carry on resuscitating him or do we just leave him up for the best and get back to the front? If, if you're in the middle of a fight, in the middle of a firefight, and you're shooting away... You won't have time to do CPR. You literally, you've got to uh, imagine the IC would take charge from there. Yeah. But imagine he'd just keep pushing the assault, or you'd keep shooting and leave your team medic to deal with it. And if he isn't there, you'd just well. Basically, it, defer it to your IC. Yeah. yeah. He's always gonna have, he's always gonna have the rule on it. It'll, it'll refer back to eight. He's probably not gonna have the rule on it. It's gonna be uh, higher, higher powers than two. So. It'll probably go back to the AET. So alert, eliminate, then evacuate. Yeah. Any other questions? Flight, any questions? Being awfully quiet? No, yeah, uh, box it off quite nicely for us. So we spaz an hour and wondering what the hell's going on. Yeah, we all understood in the general basis what I'm putting across here. Yep. Excellent, really? that's all we need to do. Pretty then we're cool. done, lads. You're off to do whatever you need to do. Okay. Right. Go, go, go. Right. 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 Thanks for taking the time. Have a chief, uh, if I need your shirt. shirt. A thermometer or, or some other foreign object up Christmas mm -hmm. as well. Is there, can I Should you grab some uh, empty?